Pierre either. He's kind of the main tease. He's just dismiss up these four. He's worked really hard on his game. He's worked really hard in this tournament. Schindler. And in his first match in the third leg. 43. That's a slip. Schindler will feel he's probably got two visits from here to break the throw. He's going to need at least two visits. And could break the bullseye. 64. Knocks off the 64. 144. Disappointed. It was a brilliant first half from Scott Williams. 90. So Schindler Martin got rid of 96 in the previous leg. A turn here will give him a break and allow him to throw for the set, and that's the perfect start. And that is a brilliant finish for Martin Schindler. He strikes the first blow in the opening set and will now throw. Brilliant from Schindler. What an opening set here. Four maximums already. Schindler averaging around about 103. And could possibly, and has, got a couple of visits at 155 to wrap up this opening set. Does he go for this? I mean, there's an argument for just laying up because the treble 19 would have left double 19. Well, if he'd got the treble 19, chuck it in a six, isn't it? You don't want to start messing around in the opening set of the last 32 tie at the World Championship. In which case, could have just stayed on the treble 20 and just looked to set up got the mark of darts. Anyway, he's going to get two set darts here, or should do, does do. And that is an excellent opening set for the German Martin number two. Schindler. Martin Schindler, ton average, 60% on the double. Continues to play like he did in that opening set. He may be there at the end of this tournament. Yeah, the German oh, number two, the German number one, Gabriel Clemens. There's only one spot above him in the rankings, and a huge chunk of that is obviously from his run to the semi-finals here last year. If he took that away, Shindy is by far and away the top performing German on the tour. The last two years he's been more reliable than anybody. How about this? Well, went to the 12s, fair enough. If he'd stayed on the treble 20, he'd end up on double six and then maybe double three, things get a bit awkward. I think a sensible play from Shindy. Being afforded that luxury to tear up 80, Martin, Martin Schindler. Tops. Would be for fourth consecutive leg, and it is. Scott Williams won the opener. It's been all Martin Schindler since as he strikes first in set two. He felt that something had clicked in his game, his throwing action or something. He was feeling great prior to the Christmas break. And when he is feeling good, he is capable of the spectacular, but this is good battling from Schindler. Oh, first out of the double since the opening leg for Scott Williams. And for Schindler to rattle through set two here, 44. Double 16. 2-0 Schindler. Some signs of life from Scott Williams, but Schindler snuffing them out. That will come in this game for him, and it's how Schindler deals with it. It's how positive the outcome comes from that spell for Scott Williams. 84. Threatening a break of throw here in set three. Fifty-four. Not enough for Shindy. So you require 152. Williams bossing this set at the moment. Another in there. Leaves got at 16 for a 1 5 2. As if it were nothing. Just what he does. Win that. Even if he loses this one, he's 3 1 up, although he's been in that position before. Here we go, Shindy. Here we go. Maybe he hasn't given up on this set. 1 6 2, a bogey number. So Williams is going to get to a finish. How oh, about this? This could get really tasty. Back to back, brilliant from Williams. And he's going to get a look for the set. Shouldn't have done that well in the match. With his lap darts landing below. He's seen on a couple of 96 combinations, but he's found a way through. This for the set. Oh, is it double double? 
It was. But he couldn't take it out. It was flashing. It was unsuccessful. Martin Schindler to break back. Double top. Two chances to really throw this set into doubt. It might be drifting away now. Well, Lumsdorff has to lose a dart. But this to blast through the third set. Good reaction, good response from Scott Williams. And he halves the deficit, and for the first time in the match, Martin Schindler has something to ponder. Really have done with the trouble there, Scott Williams. It made things a lot easier if he's allowed back to the board. Martin Schindler just allowing whatever insect that was to clear off out the way. I think George Noble is going to give it a bit of encouragement. Well, he didn't catch it in chopsticks, but it's still pretty impressive. Here's the treble 18. He went on the hunt for this in the previous leg after hitting a five on the one on nine. Can't get it there. Williams already had a one five two in the match. He could fall with a one four six. Scott Williams, brilliant on the double sixteen again. Well, Schindler won six successive legs. Scott Williams has now fired back with five of his own. There's nerves here, and why wouldn't that be? It's a huge game. And a huge moment in it. And it's a decent setup. Scott Williams leaves himself on a finish that should get him at least one dart at a double. Treble ask a serious question. Oh, ah, what a visit! 45. But this is for the set. Huge passage of play incoming. It's only going to be one for Williams. Well, it's not even one. That's a clanger from Scott Williams. He missed the big number. It costs him a dart for the set. Schindler double 18 to break and have the darts for a 3 1 lead. And Scott Williams, who should have had a chance to wrap up this set and be level. He's tightened up here, Schindler. And Williams, with a quick release, follows. And he's going to get another opportunity to win this set. He should. Missed the big number on the 74 combination. What a wobble this is for Martin Schindler. He's gifted this to Scott Williams. We should be level in a few moments' time. Double eight. Scott Williams wants noise in the hall. He's a showman. And he is level in this game. Scott Williams from 2 0 down has made it two apiece, and we have a real battle on our hands. And he shouldn't let. Wins the qualifiers, the Grand Prix at the match for the European Champs. He missed the Grand Slam, beaten in the final qualifying round. And that was for Stephen Bunting, averaged 111. A lovely dart leaves double 18. 48. Unable to take it out. This would be some way to seal a set, wouldn't it? Big ask. Such a big ask now. Certainly not now. What a shot this would be. Oh, to rattle through the fifth set. Everything has gone against him in the previous two sets. But Martin Schindler finds the biggest finish of the match to go one set away from the match and a place in the last 16. 180 ton against the darts. Shindy must be feeling the pressure. I mean, it's a great visit. It's not quite enough to get to a finish. What a first half from Williams. He's going to just stay there, isn't he? 140. Why wouldn't you? Two data to lead in the sixth set against the throw. That hurts. 
That hurts the German when he gets him down to 135. Will he even get a look at it? Once in the three. Gets the treble 18, double 12. Lovely stuff. 12 guard to Scott Williams to break. Scott Williams is really good at that. He didn't let that first out derail him, he just went away. Advantage Schindler. Set up play needs to be good. Go to 25 with a second dart. Brilliant from Martin Schindler. What a leg. And all Williams can do is try and hit a 140 and try and pressure the 36. But Schindler pins the 36, throws for the match. Williams asks the question for a 10 darter. Martin Schindler, millimetres from the leg. And Scott Williams takes us all the way to a deciding set. Well, this match continues to seesaw. And it's the German who's getting the better of it right now. Mitchell to leave. Mitchell Williams to leave 90 again. Got the wrong score. Schindler get the right shot. It'll be the 20 segment. That leaves double five. He's, he's had chances to win this match in this set. Scott Williams. Oh, same drill. Leaving it to the third dart on this occasion, but he's hitting with the third dart. And Scott Williams led by one leg to nil in set one. Look at the strut. And look at the response. This is brilliant. Look what Schindler's left, Dan. 100. Martin, you have won 90. He's seen how to take it out. That's the one! It's just a gimmick! Two troubles to get to a finish. And he's not going to get them. Scott Williams. 60. The winning line is just tantalizingly on the horizon. And it's getting closer and closer still. It's right there! Well, Martin Schindler has had chance upon chance in this leg, but he's wilted here. He did this in the deciding leg of the previous. He's done it here. And Scott Williams has battled throughout this match and has a dream opportunity. And Scott Williams wins it. He trailed for so, so long and has found a way to turn it around. Good pressure, Shaq, because you just never know. It's Clemens' leg to hold, though. That's not a lot of help. That could be. Well, is that even touching that green segment? You're going to have Russ had a pretty close look at it. And Gabriel is, too, because there was a chance that could have counted because he didn't have to penetrate. It just has to touch the green paint. Do you call it paint or ink? What would you call it? Sizzle. No, with the coloring, the coloration. There's something used to dye, right? Dye. Oh, right. Game from Live and let die. Dave that Chester wins the lap, but I tell you what, it did require a forensic first. examination from Russ Bray, didn't it? And it seems as though Gabe Clemens wanted a recount at one point. He's potentially a couple of turns away from the opening set Six of the match. Days. Yeah, but the weak visit there. I mean, yes, 100's a nice, nice one to look at, but he could be much better off. And he could be under some pressure. 78. Yeah, well, we've seen a number of attempts, John, haven't we, at three figure out shots. And I wonder if the first three figure out shot will be a level 100. It may well be two at tops for Chisnell.
Exactly up time and he's won the first set of the match. Running three legs straight after Clemens took the opening. You can always move forward from there with some kind of positivity. This is usually the phase of the match when I mentioned John holds the record for the lowest winning average in the PDC World Final and the BDO World Final. But this is the time of goodwill to all mankind, so I will not mention it, John. Not this time. What an achievement, huh? Will we require 100 well, winning the world championship is the key achievement, John. Something he's, we know you've done on three occasions. Epic stuff. He wants double top, and another three figure outshot goes a begging for the German giant. But it's like bringing a knife to a gunfight, right? If you win, it's pretty impressive. Chisnel Good swoops shot again. And it's fast becoming the story of this match. On his throw, against throw, whatever. Just get some real high, super high quality going. But uh, there we're seeing the super high quality from Chizzy. Three maximums. Is this the first for Clemens? Yes, it is. 180, 180. Chisner with an 80 point advantage here as he looks to shut down the second set in the minimum time possible. 96. A counter attack. Yeah, back to back. Well, he has to hope for a chance, but this is a 11 or 12 dart chance for each of them. Bull. Wow. Clemens deserves his chance with back to back maxes. There'll be another chance at the bull's eye. And again, he can't find it. Third down of the ball in the match for Gabe Clemens. All three have missed by varying margins. And so Chizzy now, three in hand at this double 18. All he needs is one. Best leg of the match so far, 13 dart leg. Play with urgency and focus. Right. One faulty. Who's winning, John? What's happening? What's the score? I've forgotten everything about it prior to this throw. Chisnell continues to plow on to leave a two-dart pop-pop combination finish here for another leg. 41. Diving requires 60. Single but has to move, has to shift to his right. Game no bother. Well, this is exquisite from Chisholm in terms of the finishing now. Eight out of 12, and eight consecutive legs of darts. But anyway, that's consigned to the darting dustbin of history now. Can he get back into this set and therefore the match? Oh, that gives them a decent chance unless one of these ironic high finishes comes in, Rod. Treble 19, no. Clemens will get the opportunity wow, to keep the set alive. And Gabriel, you require 96. Chance for perhaps 11 dart leg. Two darts at double. Double nine, the switch. Wild. And that's going to leave him coming back for double two if he comes back at all. Well, that's better than nine. It actually is a, is a small mercy, but the problem is he's not likely to be coming back. Dave Chisnell sizing up, double 14. Now he's poking around on double seven. This is starting to get a little bit awkward for both players. Game but Dave Chisnell shuts seven. the door. And despite Clemens finally hitting a dart at double in that Four set, seven. it's still gone Four the way seven. of Chizzy. Well, Clemens still has the darts despite that leg from Chisnell and he's using them. Five missed bull attempts for Clemens now. Four maximums after that last visit. Hello. Good afternoon. Wow. Teasing his game. Yeah, he won't get a nine, but he's trying to say nine to Chisnel winning 4 0. Very good, John. You enjoyed that, didn't you? As you slipped seamlessly into another one of your many languages.
36. And we only require 45. Double 16. And a lovely leg of darts. 11 dart leg of darts for Gabe Clemens. And he's still very much in this contest. 1 3 2. Didn't need to go for the ball ball 32 because Clemens isn't within touching distance of the finishing line in this leg himself. Yeah, that's decent enough, really. Well, we've just seen 58 as well, haven't we, John? So, 58. Can he replicate it? Require 58. Can he go pop, pop, 18 tops? Tops to move to the brink of victory. Beautiful. Yeah, matching 14 dart legs. Up there at the top, ready to plant the Chisnell flag at the top of the mountain, only to find Clemens stamping on your hand and forcing you right back down to a base camp. As Clemens keeps clattering in to the treble 20. That's half a dozen for Big Gabe now. Well, and a pretty big shot, considering the attack Chizzy's launching here. He answers the 180. He's down to 81 after 9, and there's absolutely nothing Clemens can do when he started the leg. Well, he was a 12-leg drought of maximums for Chisner, but he's found a maxi now, and it really matters, it really counts, it's left him on 81, after nine darts, to win the match now with this combo, oops, well that's a huge oops, needs a treble, won't get a dart at anything, 60 left Dave, it'll be 40 left, but that's scant consolation, that was a bodged attempt, it really was, yeah, very costly 70 hit there, can he move up and get that treble 19 in? No, he caught underneath. Well, now this is a bona fide match winning chance for Tisdale. Three darts in hand at double top. To move through to the last 16 here. And oust the German Gabe Clemens. And in the end, Chizzy, too cool for Clemens, and gets through. There were some torrid moments for Dave Chisnell as he struggled to close the match out. Jeffrey de Graff will be well aware of the size of the task here. So a positive start could help him. Rob Cross is number exceed for the reason he's ruthless and he'll want to get this done with a minimum of force. He knows what it takes to win a world title. He knows how many legs sets you may have to play over the next week or so. So if he can avoid any drama here, it might help his tilt at a second world title. Robbie require 49. Mm, looks a pretty comfortable leg. Double 16. So hit the front. That'll do it. Not a fair leg. Rob Cross. All leg is Jeffrey to throw first. Game. Oh, another. Doesn't get it. De Graaf will get a look at the 146, and that is a slip from Cross that could cost him a dart for the set. We've seen this already today, and it was this route. A couple of treble 19s for the double 16. Scott Williams in that absolute thriller to open up proceedings. But Rob Cross, with that careless last start, may just be restricted to one dart for the set here. 17, yeah. 18 for tops. It should have been a better chance but he does get the first real chance to win the opening set. And he does not take it. Here's the opportunities the graph has to take. He should have laid this up better. But stay straight, there's a dart of ball. 18 segment. Doesn't even entertain the treble. This for the first set. And the set dart comes and goes and lets off a rock cross. KG left is decided. Both about 18 darts each. It has not been particularly convincing. The yeah, Rock Cross gets the first set in the back, surviving a set dart of the ball from Jeffrey de Graaf. He wasn't made to work in his opening couple of rounds, Rob Cross, and when he was pushed by Chris Doby, he did fire back, but it wasn't enough. 
Yeah, took an excellent display from Dovey to beat him. 26, Jimmy you, Moore, you the lot those over the last couple of years. I think it was a turning point for Chris Dovey, that match alone. Just to beat Rob Cross after the Wilt. At the Wilt match play, and from there there's been a steady rise. Keep an eye on his match tomorrow with Ross Smith tomorrow. Could be tied around that one. No, Doesn't quite get the 1 3 9 he wants to leave tops, but DeGraff, mid range finish. Ooh, is he going double double? Well, that leaves tops. 52. Robbie require 80. These, these opportunities that Jeffrey. Now missed four at doubles. Key missed a set that in the opener. This would hurt early in set two. Rob Cross steadying himself. Yeah. Oh, brilliant finish. And De Graaf has made a couple of mistakes in this match and has been punished on both occasions. Oh, this might be wiping out the advantage, Jeffrey. Has. It's a perfect scoring visit from Rob Cross. Right back in the hunt in this leg. Is it? Gets him down to a two data. We'll expect the layup here from Rob even more so now. And Jeffrey de Graff just can't get a leg off here. It looked like he was comfortably in charge of this leg, but he just hasn't hammered home the advantage. It's just been a treble of visit. But he's going to get an opportunity. A little bit of a re grip. Misses that by distance. And doesn't make up for it on double A. It's another mid range finish that Jeffrey de Graaf's unable to take out. Rob Cross for a two set lead. He's taking his time, Rob. We see this over and over. Won the last set on double 10. And he's won this set on double 10. And Jeffrey de Graaf has been competitive, just hasn't got. That killer instinct that Rob Cross has got, and again, nowhere near his best Rob Cross with an average of around about 93. That bit more consistency from Rob Cross. And he's edging his average up here, Rob. It's going up above 96. And we're starting to see voltage move through the gears. Here's the graph again. This time he gets it right for another match. And he does get him to a finish. Still behind in the leg. Oh, look at this from Rob. Good. Oh, brilliant finish from Rob Cross, and he's warming to the task. We expected him to play better in round one, and he's delivering. His average creeping up towards 98, a 148 finish. Could he? The answer is maybe. Tragically for De Graaf, the answer is no. Robbie requires 72. First, used the first start really well. And a bit of a flyer at the bullseye. It's only going to be one. So there might be a reprieve here. Huge moment. Is Cross up to it for three sets to nil. And he isn't, and he's pulled it wide and low. Jeffrey requires 41. Jeffrey De Graaf gets a chance for a set. It's double 16. Just next to it. Just there! And Jeff Riddick takes a big step back into this match. He survived two set darts there for a 3 0 deficit. The gap is just one set now. And two all, and Cross had the darts for a three set lead. Okay, but De Graaf should be getting to something in the same sort of ballpark. Oh, Even better, in fact. Jeffrey De Graaf has upped it, and credit to him. He stuck to his gun, stuck to his task. 
And he could get an opportunity in this leg to level up at two sets apiece. May only be a doubt of the ball for Rob. 13 segment. And it's ball to save himself in this fourth set. And he does save himself, and that will hurt Jeffrey de Graff, because that set was in touching distance. Just getting a big trap with your last start in the side of the legs. You saw how much it meant there, the reaction from Jeffrey. Oh, well, what timing. Rob Cross finds the ma 11th match of the match, six to him, and it gives him a chance to restore some real daylight in set score and go one away. Oh, on the last 16. Robbie Rigmore, 127. To clear 307 points in two visits in a deciding leg of a set. It is on to the 17 segment. Bullseye again for back to back bull finishers and to steal the set away. 102. Jeffy Rigmore, 146. To shot this would be. Carry on and tee it up. Always awkward. When you're splitting a score, Rob Cross will go nine. But we saw it earlier on double 16 when his dart kicked right, it made it awkward. 72. Robbie required 25. It's for the set. Big nine is there. Double eight. Gets yeah. it. Rob Cross has daylight again. He leads 3-1 in this one. You don't need the two visits. Oh, just when you think Rob's going to run away with the tie, Jeffrey just asks a question. Oh, it's good. Single 18. Leaves double 60 to go with an elect. He misses, can De Graaf hit and get the break? Huge moment for Jeffrey De Graaf. Yeah. Oh, brilliant that yeah. from Jeffrey. Yeah. Unless Rob Cross can take a 1 5 4, he's not going to. De Graaf to come back oh, at Rob Cross yet again here. Jeffrey De Graaf 42. Double 16. And the transition to double eight works for him again, and he's got another set. Rob Cross cannot get rid of Jeffrey de Graaf. In that break, he's obviously been working on his mental side of the game, Jeffrey de Graaf, just to sort of hang in there and keep his head up. He's never dropped his head in this match. There's been little moments no, of anguish. He's channeled it in the right way. 94 for Cross. Double top for a brilliant lap. It is brilliant. Rob Cross levels this set up. He is averaging over a ton in this game. This could have been a very different score. But he has been very, very wow. good at times, and that is 180 number 10 for Voltage. Mm. He will get match darts. And he could have plenty of them. He's weathered a fight back from Jeffrey de Graaf. But you tip your hat to both it's players. Rob Cross, Cross for the way he's just four. found his best form. Jeffrey de Graaf for making Rob Cross work. But this is for a spot in the last 16. Double 16 for Rob, and he is into the last 16. That is a big display from Rob Cross.